Here's Brody Brazil. Okay, I'm here to bring you these 10 thoughts about the Jersey retirement of number 12 for Patrick Marlowe last night at SAP Center. And yeah, I'm recording this about 24 hours removed from a beautiful ceremony. I mean, this is something we've had on our calendars for months. All the planning and production that went into it, it was highly expected, right, that this would be very cool. But I don't think any of us could realize the monumental nature of what was happening at the tank until we were actually in the moment. So beautiful, so touching, so moving, so special to just be a part of. Whether you were there or watched it on television, I think you understand what I'm talking about here. So in no particular order, I wanted to put together these 10 thoughts while they were fresh to kind of recap what we saw at SAP Center. All of this, in my opinion was worth the wait. And the Sharks did wait quite some time to put their first jersey up there in the rafters. All the other teams from the early 90s, the Lightning, the Ducks, they've all retired jerseys. The Sharks were one of four teams entering last night to never do this. Now, the other three were the Winnipeg Jets, former Atlanta Thrashers, so a bit of a disjointed history. No surprise they've yet to honor any anybody individually like this yet. And the other two teams are the most recent expansion clubs, Las Vegas and Seattle. So obviously, you know what, two and five or six years in, they've just not had that opportunity. But the Sharks have been around since the early 90s, 91 to be exact. They just had to wait for Patrick Marlowe to, you know, stop breaking all of these records, stop playing forever, stop having this incredible career and everything that he was doing. Yes, other teams typically didn't have to wait this long, but the Sharks did. It was all good. Worth the wait. Patty was the right choice to go first. No question about it. So uh, if there was any question when the Sharks would do it, it certainly would they do it. Not would they do it. It would only be when they would do it for Patrick Marlowe. We got to witness that last night, 25th of February, 2023. Which, by the way, kind of felt like the best night at the tank since April of 2019. Yeah, I'm talking about round one, game seven against Las Vegas, the Pavelski payback game, the five-minute major, the four goals. uh, You know the story. But it was a pleasant time warp last night. I said that to somebody, and I was like, that's it. That's how to describe what's happening here tonight. A time warp of energy from the fans and a huge crowd and witnessing iconic moments at SAP Center. And you know what? You fully realize it now after being on the outside of the playoffs, looking in for three going on four campaigns now, how lucky we were all those years with Patty at the helm and Jumbo right by his side and a handful of other, you know, key players. But it was assumed automatic every season that the Sharks would be in the playoffs. They would compete for the cup year after year. And now that we haven't had that and we've had some rougher times and we've had some different you know, size of crowds. And it's just, it's been a different vibe as the team has kind of, you know, paid the price for all that winning over the years. But last night, so refreshing to see everybody in attendance like they always used to be and to know that they're still out there. They still back the team. They wanted to recapture a bit of, you know, those memories and have this moment together again. Man, that was, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about last night and how people showed up. And I don't know what this ceremony cost the Sharks to do. I imagine it was a pretty penny based on how elaborate and perfect things were. Worth every cent. To do to do this not only for Patty, but also for the fans and to kind of reestablish, yeah, you know what? This is who we've are, this is who we've been, this is who we always are, and this is what we're going to continue to be. So an awesome night, a great one in, in a long time. And hey, we had. We had games in 2021 where no fans were even allowed, right? So we've all been through a lot on the ice, off the ice in the last couple of years. This was nice to get one of those good old days type of nights. How about the permanence of that banner going up in the rafters? Now, we witnessed it, whether in person or on television, and you know you see it up there, but, but what you haven't really probably realized yet is that next week when you go to the tank, it'll be up there. Next year, when you go to the tank, it'll be up there. Next decade, when you go to the tank, it'll be up there. The permanence of 12 being up there. And whether you watch the ceremony on television or you were there in attendance, you'll look at that banner and say, I I remember the night. 
I remember the speeches. I remember the videos, the tributes, the tears, the smiles. Hopefully you won't remember the result of the game, but <laughs> I digress. I mean, all of that goes into the, like how this is a forever thing. Have you realized that yet? Have you thought about that yet? You can tell your kids about Patrick Marlowe. Who's that? Who's 12 up there? Dad, who's that? Well, let me tell you about Patty. Your kids, kids. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's go deep for a second. That banner is going to hang for the rest of time. And it went up last night. And you'll always remember last night. That's so cool. It was great to see Sharks alumni there, the presence, and not just for Patty, but also for the franchise. I mean, he had teammates from the 90s and 2000s there, and the 2010s there, and the 2020s there. Heck, the current team came out on the bench, watched the ceremony live in person. But all of that, I mean, obviously to show Patrick's support, which is cool, but a kind of a side angle of this is that it is really important for the Sharks to continue growing their alumni core and their alumni association, which has become a lot more formal in the last handful of years. Whether you're a hockey fan, baseball, basketball, football, whatever, I'm here to tell you it's so important to have a good alumni association for your team. You want the former players to come back into town for events like this or for um, you know fan festivities or events that the team will put on. You want them wanting to come back and do things for the team. It only creates a much better environment and opportunities and possibilities. There's a lot of Sharks players who remain local, which is cool. A lot of them end up working with us on the broadcast. But to bring in some of these people, maybe for the first time in a long time, very cool of the Sharks to do this. I hope it only helped them bond. And obviously, they all had the Legends game too, which was very special. That does wonders for the Alumni Association, which I hope only got stronger from being in attendance together last night at the Tank. How about the Sharks growing up? Now, I mentioned they were one of those four teams to never retire a jersey. But there is something about any pro sports franchise hanging up banners that just kind of adds to their their maturity. Yeah, their growth and their evolution. Optimally, in 2016, we already would have hung a Stanley Cup title banner, right? The Stanley Cup champions of 2016, but Pittsburgh got that. And yeah, hopefully down the road, that is a possibility. But the next best thing, and in a very different way, is retiring one of your your franchise's most iconic players. Heck, one of the most iconic in NHL history. And it is a Patrick Marlowe ceremony that we witnessed. It was a Patrick Marlowe night that we all took part in. But it also very much had something and everything to do with the San Jose Sharks. This was about them. This is our first. And I think you know it's not their last. Right? I mean, right around the corner, I see a few other numbers that could join 12 right up there. But this is part of the growth and evolution to have a banner up there for somebody that means something and to know that you've done it now. You hadn't before. All the great teams have a bunch of numbers you can't wear and a bunch of years where they were the last one standing. And the Sharks are getting there. 30 plus years of existence. They'll hang more banners. But it's great to have one like this. Yeah, and sure, you put some conference champions up there, some President's Trophy seasons, absolutely. But ones like these and ones like Stanley Cup champions, those ones hit a little bit different. The production value last night was so on point. And I'm talking about everything that NBC Sports California and the Sharks production staff were able to put together. The visuals, The edited pieces, you know, the videos, the timing of things, the timeline of things, the lighting inside the building and outside the building, the music, the dramatic music that played at certain points and the moments and the emotions like they all translated. Everything hit so well. And I've got to say, being here in the Bay Area, look, there's a lot of successful teams. The Giants have had ceremonies. The Warriors have had ceremonies. The 49ers have had ceremonies. Been a while for the A's, but they've done some things that are really impressive to honor individuals and teams and accomplishments and championships. The Sharks have never really had like a big, high-level jersey retirement ceremony like this ever, right? Obviously. But what they did last night, how they put on the production, whether you were in attendance or watching on television, I mean, first class, top tier, 
whatever you want to call it, you understand what I'm trying to say here. Nothing else I don't think we've ever seen in this area tops it in terms of the presentation, the production and the presentation and just the money shot of Patty and his family and the banner going up right in front of them and the tears as Jumbo is not able to hold back his reaction and Patty's mom shedding a tear or Patty mouthing this to his wife, Christina, as the banner's going up. I can't believe this. We all saw it in glorious high definition. But again, I want to say from a personal level, I was only extremely honored to just help be part one small part of this whole evening and this whole production. What I really want to say is how proud I am of all of my colleagues and my teammates and the people that regularly bring you Sharks broadcasts and have been for decades on television. They all got to play the most important part last night, giving this to you live, but also preserving this moment for eternity. The production was amazing. I'm a production guy. I know maybe you don't all think about it that way, but Trust me, behind the scenes and with the Sharks and with the TV network, there was so much planning for this. And a lot of times planning and execution, they go hand in hand, but one can be high and the other one just misses or or vice versa. But last night, everything, everything was on point. All the hard work and whatever the ceremony cost, totally worth it if you ask me. Some surprise guests. I loved it to see Raleigh Fingers and Chris Mullen and Barry Bonds show up out of nowhere. And it really gave a bigger picture perspective, right? To, to see all the other players from different teams that have their jersey number uh, numbers retired here in the Bay Area. Like you understood what it meant for Patty. And of course, you already put him in that high echelon of, you know, individual performers that, you know, we've seen here in, in Bay Area professional sports. So he was already in that conversation and category, but then to see them show up and join him and the photo, and Barry was bowing to him. Yeah, I had a little, I had a little indication that was going to happen, but I know it was a surprise to everybody. Even though I knew it was going to happen, I still lost my breath in the moment. I mean, it was fantastic, and again, it just it gave width and depth to the whole evening and what you were actually witnessing, whether you. Whether you understood it then or maybe you're finally coming around to realize it. Patty had so many family and friends there, and I'm not even talking about the teammates. Like there was a whole section of former teammates, but then there was an entirely different section on the ice. I'm guessing 25 chairs full of people of Patrick's friends and immediate family. His contingent was impressive and it was important. And the fact that he got to share this with you know, the people closest to him, he got to you know go an extended duration. They pushed the game back even farther for his speech, which is great. Glad both teams accommodated that. They should. But to be able to talk directly to his siblings and his parents and his mom who couldn't hold back the tears, and it was just so moving. Sometimes these ceremonies exist, and it's a player and their you know wives or or uh, their wife and their or their family, and it's just it's it's small. Um. It's not extended like this one was for Patty. I thought that was so special that it, I think he flew in everybody everybody that he could. And it just hit differently because you could see all the support behind him in it. Last night's event definitely took center stage here in the Bay Area. And not to go too far down this road, but even think about 2016 when the Sharks were in the Stanley Cup final for the very first time, playing Pittsburgh. But what else was happening here in the Bay Area? Oh, you know, just another Warriors NBA Finals appearance. They were taking on, of all teams, LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. And those two series were basically happening in simultaneous fashion. So even at the the peak moment of Sharks' existence, and that, what, you know, week and a half, two weeks in the spring of 2016, even then couldn't really get full attention of this area because there was some distraction so last night, and I know the Sharks planned this. They looked at February 25th and said, this this night should be ours. We're past football season. We're not at baseball season. This We can own this night. And they did. And nothing else even impeded on last night. No player went off for 80 points in an NBA game or got hurt or there was no breaking NFL news or just nothing, nothing to even compete. And from what I understand, I mean, look, I was at the tank. And I don't know the ratings yet, but from what I understand, 
the buzz in the Bay Area and what I saw on social, it was all trending about Patrick Marlowe. People who don't even normally talk or post or broadcast about him were doing so last night based on the ceremony they watched. So you don't always get to control this. You can best steer it as they did. But fortunately, last night was only about Patty and all about Patty and the Sharks. And I'm glad that nothing else could even jump in the mix. Okay, last but not least, I saved this, obviously, for the very end. And I, and I also saved this to get past the weekend. This is a Monday as I'm putting this video out, right? Actually, Sunday night, I'm doing it here, but Monday is when I'll publish this video. I wanted the entire weekend to pass. I wanted it all to be about Patty. And sure, Jumbo was there for Patty in the ceremony. But I think now we can move forward. Because let's be honest, 12 looks a little bit lonely up there in the rafters. Jumbo and Patty were 1-2 and two in the 97 draft. They had so many years together. Roommates with the Sharks. Line mates with the Sharks. Teammates in an Olympic situation. Patrick earned going first. No question about it. If there was any debate or question, he's Mr. Shark. He came around first. He was around the last whatever. We, we really realized last night, there's no question about who, who should have went first, and it happened. But at that same respect, I think we all now understand he shouldn't be up there all by himself. And I don't think he will be for long. I don't know anything. I'm not spilling the beans here on, on anything because I, I, I don't know. This is pure speculation, pure assumption. You'd have to think the Sharks have already got some plans for 2024 and a similar type ceremony for Joe Thornton and his number 19. And how cool would it be if the Sharks are making strides next year as a team and they're in contention and a night like this could facilitate, you know, moving things forward even more, right? And, and the hype around the team and, and another just really cool occasion. Because I do feel like last night just it provided energy in the moment. But yeah, Joe Thornton is next. I don't think there's any question about it. I'll say it. And I do think it's coming soon. I, I Pure speculation right here, 2024. And I think there's a couple others. I, I think we now can clearly see a path to maybe some more of these in the near future. But Patrick Earn going first, and I think we all know who belongs next and right next to him, Joe Thornton. So again... I wanted to save that until after the weekend. The weekend was all about Patty. Let's be very clear about that. But now we can look ahead, and I think that's pretty cool. So I just wanted to put that all together. Ten thoughts about Patrick Marlowe and his number 12 being retired. This is so cool for the franchise. They needed this. We all needed this. It was a great night that, you know, overall with the team and where they're headed and what they're trying to do, it's coming during hard times. This team is really grinding and working hard to get back on track. We can all see that. We know they know what they're doing and how hard and how bad they want to get back to the days of 12 out there. But to take a moment and to look back in history and to honor him properly and the right way, I thought was so, so cool. So let me know what you think about this video. Did I miss something? Do you have a good point to add? Definitely put it in the comment section below. I appreciate everybody who I saw there last night, and like I told all of them, I was so happy you were there to witness this type of history in person. See you next time. <laughs>